Recently, I've made several videos about young earth creationism. This one applies to Christianity in general, but it also applies to Islam, Hinduism and Judaism, and others. Three of my favourite video makers, Deity 3 d Xander's Meteor and Dark Matter 2525, have made videos which contain ideas which I've sort of run with and explored in this one. I will put links in the description and recommend that any of you who don't know them already to check them out. I've had many people trying to save my soul in the comment sections recently. Apparently, all I need to do to avoid being toasted to a crisp for eternity is to believe that some mythology is real. This is problematic for me, for a number of reasons. First of all, I'm not remotely afraid of the flames of hell. Fire requires a source of fuel which cannot be infinite in a finite universe, so real fire which can actually burn a person cannot be eternal. From this we can deduce that the hell fire they talk about is supernatural or magic fire. Since I've never found any evidence for the existence of the supernatural, the chances of actually being burned by magic fire are pretty much zero. Secondly, the myths which I'm supposed to believe are, to be quite blunt, unbelievable. I can't choose to believe, contrary to what a lot of people seem to think. I can choose what information to look at, but unless something is convincing, belief does not automatically follow. Being a curious person, I don't filter the information I look at. My aim is to find out whatever is true, even if the evidence leads to a god. My experience of most religious people is that they do filter the information they look at. They are far more interested in singling out the evidence which seems to confirm the beliefs they already have, than they are to test those beliefs to see if they stand up to scrutiny. I cannot accept what most religious people are trying to persuade me of, because I have scrutinised the evidence and found it unconvincing. Another thing which the proselytizers do is to try to persuade others that heaven is really, really great and that we should all want to go there. Apart from the stumbling block of not believing there is such a thing as heaven or an afterlife, the stories I've heard about heaven don't seem that great at all. Apparently there is no sadness there. This would also be problematic for me in the unlikely event that I ended up there. According to the rules, those who disbelieve will be tortured forever in hell. I wouldn't be at all happy knowing that so many of the people I cared about are being roasted while I listen to a choir of angels. So in order for me to be happy, I'd have to have my memory wiped or my conscience removed. In which case, I wouldn't be me anymore. Then there is the constant praising. I wouldn't want to praise someone who actually wanted to be surrounded by people telling him how great he is all the time. Knowing what I do about the Yahweh character of the Old Testament, if I found out he was real, I'd spit in his eye and tell him what a scumbag he was for slaughtering all those millions of people. But none of it makes sense anyway. If God is all-knowing, like Christians say he is, then he wouldn't need to be praised at all. He'd already know who thought he was great and who didn't. So the heaven which believers describe not only seems impossible, but it's not the great place they seem to think it is. I wonder how many Christians have really thought it through. Christians keep telling me that they have a close personal relationship with Jesus, and that I need to get to know him too. When I ask them if they've had a two-way conversation with the guy, I never get a straight answer. This makes me think of the six-year-old Christopher Robin from an A.A. A. Milne poem, and his imaginary friend, Binker. To me, Jesus seemed like an adult's version of Binker, something like a comfort blanket, or an emotional crutch. I find it really hard to get my head around the fact that so many people hold on to what seem like childlike beliefs well into adulthood. It's almost like they're afraid to let go of the comfort blanket and get to know reality. Christians insist that I need to accept Jesus into my heart and believe that him being killed will somehow absolve me of bad things I've done in my life and the alleged disobedience of the alleged first two human beings. None of this makes any sense to me. 
On this basis alone, I cannot accept such a proposition. I don't believe any of it actually happened, and I don't understand the mechanism of how this forgiveness works. It makes no sense to me that a morally supreme being would require part of himself to be tortured and killed in order to forgive us for the sin which he imbued us with in the first place. It would be like me having two children and punishing the wrong one every time one of them misbehaved. I've only touched on a few things here. There are many more reasons why it's hard to accept religion. I hope this is helpful to religious believers who genuinely want to know why it's so hard to convert someone like me to become a faithful follower of their set of beliefs. I also hope that the next person who tries to save my soul in the comments section will know which tactics are not going to work. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.